Hello everyone, it's Trina here from There is the Card for That.ca and today I'm making a seasonal card because while it is technically fall anywhere in the northern hemisphere, um it's also winter in in Calgary here. Uh we got hit with a boatload of snow, like record breaking amounts. Um, they said something like 38 centimeters, which is mm, 14 inches, but I have a picture of the snow while it was still snowing on the picnic table at my work. And yeah, there's, there's pretty close to like 18 inches of snow there, which would be 45 centimeters. So I'm not sure where they were measuring from, but it was a ridiculous amount of snow and roads were horrendous. And that just seems to be the way it is. It gets a little bit cold and we get a little bit of snow and everybody in this town forgets how to drive and freaks right out. And then um, it gets super nice. Like it's going to be 24 Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, um, but it's really nice. <laughs> um, so I'm doing a, a card and I'm using, I done the majority of my die cutting prior to to filming and I used the large wreath die and I die cut out a whole bunch of the little boughs um, out of two different colors of green paper and then I just used the Nuvo smooth precision glue to put those on together and then I replaced the straw hat from this little scarecrow from the Happy Harvest stamp set which is one of my absolute favorite stamp sets from Lawn Vaughn. Like when I saw this one, there was out loud exuberation when they revealed this one, not last year, the year before, I believe. And it's still, it's still one of my absolute favorites. It doesn't even get put away with my fall stuff. Um, so I replaced his straw hat with the Santa hat from Hats Off to You. And so it was just a little bit of masking and then stamping that down. Um, I was playing around and that's why you don't see the stamping for that. Um, I wasn't sure entirely if it was going to work, if his head was too big. I know this, the hats usually fit on all of the critters that Lawn Fawn puts out, but I wasn't sure about the scarecrow. So I was really just playing around and I was like, oh, that looks really good. So I added some extra straw and some patches to his clothes and I was like, okay, we're going to cut this out. Um, <clears throat> and then I stamped the large and small flower from the same stamp set. And all of the colors that I'm going to use are just across the screen because I'm never, I'm never going to remember them. <laughs> um, and I generally start with either my medium, if it's an image I'm not sure about the shadows with, and then that way I can add my darker and then blend out with the medium and then the lighter again. Um, if it's an image I'm relatively certain about, like something I've colored a whole bunch of times, like these little sunflowers, for example, um, I just go, I just start with my darkest color, go to my medium and blend out everything with my lightest color. Um, I know you, I think you're supposed to go lightest to darkest and darkest to lightest, but I'm lazy, yo. I'm super lazy and I'm kind of cheap. So it strikes me that if I'm doing two layers, when it, I feel personally that it might not be necessary, especially in such a small area like these little flowers that's more often than I have to fill my Copics because <laughs> I color with them for the most part. Like they're my favorite medium. Um, mostly because it's, it's pretty easy for me to hold them. Um, I have a, a rugby injury from high school in my right hand. And so when the weather turns crappy, like it has, um, it really hurts. It really hurts a lot. I was told at a very young age that I was going to develop arthritis in that hand, and I'm pretty certain that I have, actually. Uh, it's not very pleasant. Um, I've been wearing a compression glove at work, and I'm hoping when the pressures level out and things aren't going from like minus four Celsius to plus 24 Celsius in a week, it won't hurt so much. Um, so yeah, the Copics are quite easy for me to hold. So if you've been shying away from coloring with markers because your your hands are sore, um, try the sketch. Like, I would be so sad if I had to spend 
like in Calgary, seven months of my year, <laughs> seven months of the year, my winter tires are on my car, um, without being able to color. It would, it would, it would wreck me. So I'm just going through and I'm just adding some rosy cheeks and sometimes for the scarecrow I don't really add rosy cheeks. I don't know if you've watched or seen other videos or blog posts that have him, um, but I figured because he's going to be covered in snow <laughs> and it's cold, he'd probably have rosy cheeks because you just get rosy cheeks when, you, when you're cold, right? Um, so I'm just going through and coloring um, to add the additional straw to the back of his head. I just wanted him to floof out a bit because the hat really takes away a lot from this one when you're not using the straw hat. Um, I just used a micron marker and then I'm just super careful. Like I don't have the Copic multi-liners and I don't have the EK Success Copic Safe Pen. Um, I just have a gray it's a pigment based um and I think it's from Stadler yes it is um and that seems to work well as long as I'm not using the Copic like rubbing it back and forth over top of it all the time and it comes in a bunch of different sizes and it's like a billion dollars cheaper <laughs> than the multi-liners are here in Canada because everything here is more expensive um so I'm gonna put this together and then you're gonna see like here I'm picking out the greens for his shirt I'm like I don't know what color I want to use here because normally I would have done a red shirt but he has a red hat so it's like no I can't have a red shirt that's silly <laughs> it's so funny right because as though my scarecrow would change his clothes to coordinate better um, I also wanted to bring in a little bit of green to complement the red because they are complementary colors opposite the color wheel and um, just to make it feel a little more Christmas because aside from the die cut wreath, like the images themselves are very full. And I wanted to strike a, a, a decent balance between fall and winter. Much like is happening outside. Like we got so much snow. Like nearly two feet of snow. It was ridiculous. At my sister's place down in the south, she said it was up to her knees on just flat stuff. That's not even at the bottom of a hill or anything like that. It was up to her knees. People were digging themselves out of their houses. And now all the snow is gone. It rained. And uh, you would never know. You would never know. People are still growing flowers and vegetables in their gardens. Um. So here I'm just trying to place where I want him to go because again I was just playing around and then when he worked out I was like oh I should flip on the camera I I just wasn't sure so I knew I wanted him in the wreath and I had made that little mistake you probably saw it at the beginning when I was yammering on about something else um see how the wreath is a little bit lopsided at the top at first I was like crap crap but then I was like perfect because that is where I can put his hat and he will have more stability <laughs> so there, there's there's no mistakes, right? There's just happy accidents. We've talked about that before. Um, and this is another mistake that I'm making right now. I should not have pre-assembled this entire piece because I am going to want to use Lawn Fawn's textured white embossing powder because I want it to look like snow. And that was not smart. <laughs> I should have done it separately. I should have like put it together but not adhered it together because now I'm going to you using their embossing pen. Um, I think this is the first time I use the pen and I like it. It doesn't seem to stay as wet as the Versamark pen does like for as long. So I found that I had to reapply in order to get the same stickiness as I would have with the Versamark, but it could be because it's brand new and all the ink was just coming down the pen for the first time. I don't know. I'm going to keep using it. Um, I actually just got a whole bunch of new Lawn Fawn stuff because I went a little bit crazy, um, including all of, it's like, it was sold on Simon's Stamp as their um, embossing kit. So it's got 
the detail white, the silver, the gold, and the rose gold. And I am so excited to use the rose gold. I have a different one, but it doesn't feel very rose goldy to me. Um, so you can see here that the embossing powder is going in places I didn't actually want it to go. And so I was like, how am I even going to fix this? I didn't use my powder tool. I did not plan this out very well. But then I was like, okay, well, if he's outside, the snow is not going to just be perfectly on the top of his hat and perfectly on the top of his arms and on the top of the flower. It's just not going to do that because that's not how snow works. That's how snow works in movies, but that is not how snow works in real life. So after I heat set that, I'm going over all of those areas again with the um, embossing ink pen from Lawn Fawn, and then I'm going to add more. And I'm going to try really hard to be a little more careful about how I sprinkle this on, but you can see how it's getting kind of like between his arm and his head. Um, and see, this is where I figured out like, oh, I should color a little bit and then add more powder. And that seemed to work out really well. So I don't know if it was starting to flow better or if I was just quicker about getting that on there. And then I'm going to heat set that again. Um, also, one of the hardest things in the world is to cover up red. And it's not just in coloring and it's not just markers. It's markers, it's pencil crayons, it's pastels, it's nail polish, it's red paint, it's red lipstick on the walls. Red is one of the hardest colors to cover up. Um, so I also didn't really want a lot of red showing through. So what I should have done is like maybe used my pencil and been like, oh, this is gonna be my snow line, most specifically for his hat. And um, that might've worked out better for me. I'm using a piece of knit picky paper that I cut down with the largest of the small stitched rectangle sets. And uh, I'm just using foam tape from the dollar store to put that on. Um, I knew I wanted the wreath popped up. His head was already popped up because it was on the thing. So I'm gonna figure out real quick here that I actually need two layers of foam tape behind him because it needs to sit flush on this piece of knit picky paper. And this particular pattern where it's like the stitched, I don't even know what those are, little designs. They remind me of upside down trees or maybe I just had my paper upside down, <laughs> which is quite possible, right? Um, I don't know, um, is my absolute favorite pattern in this pack. Like if I could get a six by six pack of just this paper, hint, hint, lawn fun, um, that would be divine. I would be so, so very happy. So I'm gonna stick that down and uh, do that. And then I'm gonna think about it for a minute. I think I chopped out about two and a half minutes of sped up, so like five minutes in real time of me going, huh, I don't know what to do. I don't know if it likes. So what I did was I actually took out my Marvy Snow Pen. Um, I didn't like the red that was coming through and I thought if I only covered the red or the part on his hat with the Marvy snow pen and not the rest, it would look really weird. So it wasn't my intention here to cover up the textured embossing paste powder from Lawn Fawn because I actually really, really like the effect. I do not like that I did not think my color powder pattern through. <laughs> So I'm using, my pen is gushy, so what I have to do is I have to take this acrylic block like you see, pounce it out a couple times so that I get this little puddle, and then use the brush, or the little bullet tip of the pen as like a little paintbrush to go back and forth and put it on, because if I try and add any sort of pressure and draw directly on my piece with this, I will get puddles of this stuff, and then I will cry. <laughs> because it has happened. Um, so I tried to really zoom in on this because if you haven't seen the snow pen work before, it is like magic. Um, it poofs right up. You do have to get your heat gun super good and hot um, because you don't want it to sit there. It still warps. It's, you're still doing stuff. And then um, once it's poofed up, you want to remove the heat right away because this stuff will burn it will discolor and it will smell <laughs> and there will be smoke if you're not really paying attention um so i'm using the happy everything 
from the reveal wheel holiday sentiments because it wasn't really a Christmas card and it's not really a fall card so I'm just like happy everything just do it up and I had had this piece uh, a card base that I had made for something else before and it was crooked or something like that or I'm not sure so I just trimmed that down with my <clears throat> excuse me Fiskars guillotine trimmer and then I just cut it at an angle and then I'm just going to put that right on there and I do have a little itty bitty mini stapler and I think that one's from close to my heart I always forget I have it and then I see something on Pinterest that has these baby staples and I'm like oh I have that I have to use it so now I'm using it because I was on Pinterest right um so I did get a bunch of warpage from using the heat embossing because pattern paper we all know this it's not as sturdy as regular paper so I'm using some flat two-way tape and this is not score tape this is also another find from the dollar store it's about five-eighths of an inch wide you get three rolls for a buck and they don't have it all the time so when they do have it I buy it as much as possible <laughs> because I'm cheap I'm lazy and I'm cheap I am a catch hey <laughs> but I figure if I can save on adhesive then I can spend more money on stamps right and so I'm just going to cover the back completely with that dollar store two-way flat tape adhesive. I am going to stick that down to the front of my card. Try really hard to get those bubbles out. And it it, it didn't it didn't get all the bubbles out. But you know what? This card turned out super cute and I'm super thrilled with it. And that is our card for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button and comment. And I love it all. Thank you so much. Bye.